welcome along to the Invincible Podcast. We got Lee Judges in the building and back by popular demand. So popular, right? That you guys said, come on, we need to see this guy on every week. So we thought, we'll have blocked, or did we? <laughs> Not really. Oh, <laughs> Not really. We sort of been forced into it, haven't we? Like, you know? Me and Lee had a big dispute over it, but eventually we said, okay, yeah. let's bring him in. Let's see if he'll be any good. Oh, we got Julian in the building. <laughs> I was dead against it, I've got to say, like, you know. Yeah, I was quite disappointed Because now I've got to that. do, like, homework and notes and things like that now every day, like, you know. Yeah, well, it gets phone calls in the middle of the night. What are we talking about, like, you know? I've got to get my notes done and all that. Yeah, well, thanks to you, I spent two hours last night when yeah. I got home trying to research the answer to your question. Yes. Yes. Remember what his question? question? Go on, what's your well, question? My question was, uh, have we, or was it the last time, or can you remember? Oh, yeah, the, the last, last time, time Arsenal scored five goals at half time. Yeah. And we yeah. don't think it's ever been done. Well, I looked at four big Arsenal victories over the years 7 0 against Everton. And I thought, right, we must oh, have yeah. scored four. I think we we're only three or four nil up at half time on that one. And then I thought, right, I've definitely, I've definitely got it. 7 0 away to Standard Age. Again, that was only 4 0 at half time. And then I thought, right, I've absolutely got him now. Our biggest ever victory against Loughborough, 12 0. It was only 4 0 at half time. So the, wow. so the only one that I can find, I think it was 1931, January, against was Grimsby. <laughs> no, I wasn't there. <laughs> and we won that one 9 1. I thought, right, that's definitely there. I can't find any records. This is what took me so long. I was going through all my old Arsenal history books and it doesn't have the half-time score. So if anyone knows the half-time score of Arsenal Grimsby, January 1931, that could be my answer. Wow, wow. So we were part of history yesterday. Yeah, we were part of history. Being at that game, being at that game, 5-0 at half-time, because I can't remember Arsenal being 5-0 up at half-time. Um, and it was an unbelievable performance. It yeah. was a game that we went into knowing that we only needed a point, really, to um, qualify. But if we won the game, we topped the group. And we did it in emphatic fashion. As a matter of fact, at home, in the Champions League, Arsenal have been unbelievable. unbelievable. You know what I mean? Six, sorry, seven last night. Um, we put four past PSV. Two, we haven't, was it two, two nil against yeah, Sevilla? Well, it was, it was six last night. So I think on aggregate, our three home games are 12 nil to Arsenal. Yeah, they haven't conceded a goal. As a matter of fact, we've only lost one game in the group and that was away to Lons. And when you look at the game, <laughs> you think to yourself, that? how did we lose to these lot? I mean, it was a, unbelievably, I was watching it back again, I um, mean, in the morning and it, we, we, we just completely, <laughs> we just ripped them apart. We could have got, and in the second half, let's be real. Yeah, it was, yeah players like, just coasting through that, saying, "Listen, no injuries, game at the weekend." That's obviously on their mind. Yeah. I mean, it was. We could have got more. It was emphatic. In fact, emphatic. Yeah. And, and when that front three click, uh, they're, they're very, very hard to stop. You know, Jesus yesterday was uh, breathtaking. I've got to say, some yeah. of his play. I think once he gets himself fit, there's no surprise. Last season, before um, the World Cup. We was unbelievable, and he was unbelievable. I think he does make Arsenal tick. I, I really do, like you mm. know, with his old up play. He ain't the the biggest player, is he? But his strength and the way he knocks off centre halves and unbalances them, and then some of his twists and turns, you know, his footwork, uh, his yeah. footwork. He's so, uh, he's, he is actually a pleasure to watch, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, he puts himself about. I mean, that first goal, I was most impressed about, which is when he won the header. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because he, if you watch it back. He just, what it is, obviously the defender's way taller than him. I know yeah, you, yeah. you were saying in your interview the defender didn't jump, but what it is, no, 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 when Jesus won, he, he timed yeah, yeah. this. He, he did jump, and I've looked into this Kevin Dusso, six foot three, Jesus, five foot nine, and he still jumped the defender. I mean, he didn't jump very well because at six foot three, you can't be jumping that well and lose the ball. But that no, but you means... know what? It's because he didn't time his jump. Yeah, mm. yeah, he didn't. Whereas time Jesus, it. so you watch Jesus, you can see he's looking at the ball, and then he times his jump perfectly. Whereas the defender, he's split second off, and that's why he didn't win that header. Yeah. Plus, as well, because he's a split second off now, he doesn't want to foul Jesus because he's in the box. 
And Jesus wins that header and then, you know, yeah, Kai Averts again. Yeah, but it's the commitment he showed. So as I was saying yesterday, it's not only the fact that we're a better team on paper, we had the better tactics, but we had that desire. And that one moment for that goal showed the desire. Mm. Yep, and the desire of Havertz to, to get on the end of it. The goalkeeper comes out. I don't think the goalkeeper covered himself in glory. I think he, he should have like, maybe come out a bit quicker, but Havertz gets there first, gets a little foot on it, and two in two for Havertz two all of a two. sudden. He was unlucky with the header before that, you know, from yeah. the Tommy Asu cross, it was a good header. Um, that, that's his best performance for, you know, you could see yesterday, and I know, I, you know, you can talk about confidence and why professional footballers lose a bit of confidence, but his confidence yesterday, you could see it. There was a moment in the second half when he tried to do something uh, and it ran off, a, ran off a, uh, for a goal kick. Two minutes later, he does that quick turn because he's not worried about that mistake. Not that it was a mistake. It didn't mm. go for him that time, but he, he's now his confidence is up. He's going to try things and all that. And, and I think watching him in the last few games, or, or that, always playing a bit safe, you know, like making sure that he got the part. Yesterday, he just played with a freedom of because he's confident. And you know, that goal, I think, on um, at the weekend, maybe a turning point for him. He's so much more fluent in. The Champions League, you know, what I mean, we're, we're, we're scoring goals even away from home. We've looked fluent. Why is it that we're like that in the Champions League, but then we're in the Premier League, we're a lot more, you know, um, I don't know, yeah. a bit more methodical. It's, it's to do with the opposition. Yeah. Why they I mean, up. The opposition really played into our hands yesterday, and they and they have done in in all the, three the, games. Yeah, all three games is that teams come to Arsenal, and even when Arsenal go to them. And they just want to defend. <coughs> they just want to do this low block. And in one way, I was kind of almost disappointed how well and how easily we beat them because what that's going to do is set Wolves up to even reinforce how they're going to play because it was an exciting game. It was an open game. It was the kind of game we mm. like to see, whereas most games that we see now for Arsenal are a bit of a slog. And it's not because Arsenal aren't, or aren't trying to be fluent. I mean, that quote from... Mikel earlier in the week about being in the traffic jam that he wants to you know you want to be going at 100 miles an hour but when you've got 55 uh, taxis around you you just simply can't and that's what they're facing in the Premier League whereas these Champions League teams for some reason they're just I think they're maybe they're not doing their research on Arsenal because they're absolutely playing into our hands but also I think they've they feel that they're, they're, they've got a chance you know what I mean they, they're confident in their own ability uh, uh, and go for it a little bit, like. And to be honest, they did get, they did open us up a few times yesterday, like with some good play yeah. themselves, like you know Saliba was uh, caught out a few times, but they go for it. But for the for the first time since the last European game, Saka's not been doubled up on. Yeah, you know, what I mean, every game that he plays in the Premier League, he's doubled up on. He wasn't yesterday, and look at the freedom that he had and, and whatever, like you yeah. know. Uh, so uh, yeah, my my, you know, my theory on it, right, is that. You're playing in the Champions League, you're playing against teams that are either champions or were nearly champions, yeah? So most of them, the teams that we played against, were probably used to... Being on the front foot. Being yeah. on the front mm. foot, dominating teams, because they're top sides in their, in their respective leagues. So PSV, you know, I remember when we played them um, and uh, watching the box-to-box... -box that uh, Turkish did with the PSV fan, and the PSV fan was like saying that, listen, we, we've just been dominating teams, we're free flowing, we've been scoring loads of goals, mm. you know, we, we're on fire at the moment, right? With, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you come to the Emirates and you come like that, you're not gonna be able to just come and do that to us. And they came and they tried to do that to us and we blew them away. And I think it's the same with, um, all these Alons had a good season last year. They what they come second in yeah, their, yeah. their league, lost by a point. right? Yeah. So you know, again, they're thinking to themselves, you know, this is the way we're used to playing. We're used to attacking. We used to. Whereas when you're playing in the Premier League now, you come up against a Brentford. They know if they come and they try and play like, yeah, you're gonna get you know uh, how Lons played yesterday. They know that that's what's going to happen if against Arsenal. They're too good. They've got too much quality. So they're like, we got to find another way to try and beat these guys. So it's yeah. going to be low block. We're going to get everybody behind the ball and that. So it's almost like the arrogance, which is not a, not a bad thing. I'm not it's, blaming it's these teams because the, these teams are coming from a position of, they are top sides, right? They're not used to, you know, and I think this is where later on in the competition, 
it will get harder for Arsenal because you then come up against teams that um, they got that arrogance, but also they got that know-how. Yeah, so if you come up, say for instance, like against an Atletico Madrid, they're like, yeah, you know what? We probably could come and go toe to toe with you guys, but you know what? We're going to leave that until we play you at home because we're here. We've seen what's been happening here. We know how good you are. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna defend quite deep as well. And then when we get you back to our place now, that's when we're gonna put it on you. And I think, so I think that's what the challenge is we're gonna face beyond um, this competition. But certainly, Arsenal are showing in this uh, competition that we still got that attacking flair. It's just that in the teams that we're playing in the Premier League are very wary of Arsenal. Remember, we've just had last season where we nearly won the league, you know what I mean? Where we were dominating team after team after team. So teams are almost treating us like a, now, how they look on us is like they're playing City, Liverpool. That same type of, that's how those teams get yeah. treated as well. And, and, and that's why, the, maybe that's that explains the lack of fluency in, in the Premier League. Yeah, and the other good thing is, I, I don't think Raya had a shot to save yesterday. No, oh, he, I think he had one yeah, where so one long he, range. He had a few. There's one talking, where he hit the post, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, one the one that hit the, hit the post, post. Yeah. Yeah. Other, other than that, you know, which was outside the box, no one's really opening this up. No. And, and, and do you know what, even last season, even when we was dominating teams, they'd have two or three shots on us. And, you know, I was always worrying about that. Like, you know, this can't c continue to keep them. It's something they've addressed. Um, yeah. Whether they're uh, making sure they keep the ball a bit better or, or whatever. I don't know, I really know. It's a great point. What it is. That Do you, know, you, know, you know what the other day, Lee, I was even thinking about it and I was like, that same thing. How many teams have really opened us up? Because a lot of even goals or even like, when we've been under pressure has been errors. Yeah. So like goalkeeping errors in particular, like, you know, remember uh, City, they didn't really open us up City, did they? It was no. only really, if you think about it, it was the rare <laughs> errors yeah. where they nearly got in. When when we played against Newcastle, bit of an error by Rea, I guess, right? Where they get the goal, controversial goal. You know, I think the only team, right? so far this season that kind of opened us up a couple of times was Spurs. Yeah, yeah. And even then, their game, their goals kind of came from errors, but they did have a couple of chances where yeah, they, they, they were kind of in. I can't win. think of another nah, team yeah. this season that has really opened Arsenal up. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're looking at Raya and thinking he's not that much better than Ramsdale because he hasn't had the opportunity to show it. Whereas last season, teams had so much kind of free reign on the Arsenal goal that the goalkeeper mm. had the to opportunity make, to, make to make saves. Whereas this time, you know, he pulls out a few crosses, you're looking at his distribution, you're not looking at world-class saves because they're not given the opportunity. No, and it was, I, I remember look, just, just thinking about it uh, the other day, when you look at the games, I thought we were totally dominant against Tottenham. We had to, you know, Ramsdale had to make a couple of really good saves in that game. I remember Brentford missing a couple of, we beat them, was it 2-0 last year? Or I think it was 2-0. 3-0. Um, 3-0. Three nil. Three nil. They had chances, you know what I mean? Uh, if you go through all the sort of, like, Man United uh, had loads of chances against us um, in, in both games, you know, and, uh, but those those have all sort of been taken out. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that, out. is that is that because of, um, obviously, I, I don't know, I look at it two factors, right? Number one, the back four looks stronger. Like he's playing Tommy Asso a lot in there now, mm. especially when he goes away from home. It's almost like you've got a bit like what City have done, isn't it? With almost like four centre backs. If you've got Ben White, yeah, you know Saliba, Gabriel, and Tommy Asso, that's almost like you've got yeah, four centre backs strong, there. Yeah. Very similar to what City have done mm. last season and are doing again when they had Stones, Akanji, Diaz, yeah. and Ake. Like not really wing-backs, like four solid defenders who've got quality yeah. who can come forward. And then just in front of them now, obviously Declan Rice is making a yeah. huge difference. Yeah. You know, defensively, you know, very solid in front of that back four. Remember, a guy who originally started off um, his football career as a centre-back. So again, even though he's great coming forward, even though he's got lots of qualities, he knows how to read the game well. He knows how to break up play. I, I heard a guy on the radio yesterday. Um, I think he's some comedian, is an Arsenal fan. That's Ian Stone. Is it Ian Stone? Yeah. He described um, Declan Rice as being very similar to Kante, right? And I sort of, first of all, I thought Kante. But then when he when he broke it down, I was like, actually, that's true. He goes, he goes. Remember when Kante first? He goes like in his heights. He goes, 
he's just everywhere. He goes, you look around, you're like, where is he? And then he just put me someone's got the ball. It's Kante nicking it off him and driving forward with it. He goes, it's the same thing with Declan Rice. It's very true. And it is, he doesn't commit fouls. He wins clean tackles. His timing of everything is good. And then when he gets the ball, he's effective at passing in it, bringing it very forward. Very comfortable on the ball. Isn't it? Yeah. So all of a sudden now, defensively, I, what I noticed Arsenal was very strong. 6-0, uh, opened them up time and time again. Shinchenko didn't really drift into that midfield role. He, he was sort of staying out as a left back. I don't know if that's something that they've looked at and thought, like, we don't really need to do that. We Maybe because Declan Rice is in, I don't know. But um, he was sort of playing more as a conventional left back yesterday. Yeah. Um, instead of like drifting in there. I think he still do it at times, yep. p- particularly against teams <coughs> that are going to d- play that block. But yesterday, I, I thought it was quite interesting that probably they think to themselves, we don't really need him in there. Yeah. So we keep him out, you know, like that. And, and, and it, it worked really well. But I, I think you're right about Declan Wright. You know, watching him play, you know, I think there's so more to his game as well. I think he can come on even more. I, I remember talking to my West Ham mate and he turned around and said, he's wasted as a holding midfield player, you know, because he can do so much more. Mm. And So it'd be interesting to see what, Arsenal do about that whether when party comes back or in January but I, I absolutely love it when he just picks up that ball and makes drives. that drives yeah. he just drives through with ease yeah but, but the <clears> other <throat> thing you mentioned about Zinchenko was that I think one of the reasons why Zinchenko played slightly differently yesterday was it was the first time that Arteta has been able to pick his front five his probably favoured front five for the, this season yeah. and that he, and it clicked we talked about it not clicking but yesterday it absolutely clicked. So he had Havertz, he had Odegaard, he had Jesus, Martinelli and Saka, which if you think about it is probably when he thought at the beginning of the season, that will be my favoured front five. And they all did click. And when you've got those five playing, maybe you don't need Zinchenko coming forward in, such, in, in the same way <clears throat> because you, know, you can't all be covering the same uh, you mm. know, bit, of, bit of grass. Yeah. Right, well, as it stands... And this is as it stands because there's still one more game to play. But obviously, we we t- we we know we're going to top the group. We know we're going to finish as you know the, the the main team in the group. So we will avoid all the teams that top their groups. So as it stands, these are the teams that we. First of all, I'm going to give you the teams we avoid. So we avoid playing Bayern Munich in the next round. We avoid playing Real Madrid. We avoid Real Sociedad as it stands, even though they're on the same amount of points as Inter Milan. Um, we avoid Atletico Madrid. They're a point above um, Lazio as it stands. We avoid Borussia Dortmund. City we would avoid it anyway, because I don't think we can get them yet anyway. Um, and we avoid Barcelona. So very, very important there, because there's some very, very big good teams, teams there. Yeah, yeah. Right? Teams, yeah. These are the teams at the moment as it stands, as it stands, we could get. We could get FC Copenhagen. It could be Galatasaray yeah. as well. It all depends. <laughs> yeah, how I, that works. I, I, I want to avoid but, Galatasaray. Yeah. But it could be FC Copenhagen. If FC Copenhagen. Could it be Man United? Yeah. It could be Man United. We could we avoid them but anyway. we'd, we'd avoid them anyway. But it's, it's more likely to be either FC Copenhagen or Galatasaray, right? Obviously, we won't get PSV because we already had them in our group. Napoli, um, we could get. That. Right? We could get Napoli. Um, Inter or Real Sociedad. Um, because they're both on the same amount of points. Inter would be difficult, but you wouldn't I be... I prefer to go to Spain. Right? Um, Lazio. Um, I'd fancy us against Lazio, but that's another team that we could get. Um, PSG is yeah. the big one there. Um, as it stands, because it could also be Newcastle, Newcastle really or AC, AC Milan. Well, we'd, yeah, avoid, we'd avoid, New- avoid Newcastle. It could be AC Milan as well. Right, but as it stands, it's looking like PSG. Um, that would be difficult. Um, RB Leipzig is another team that we could get. Again, um, you know, they were tuning up at the Etihad the other day. I mean, that's another team mm. that will be a difficult game. Um, and, uh, the, uh, and the last one that we could probably get, well, actually one of two, FC Porto, who currently occupies second place in that group with Barcelona, or Shakhtar, who are also on the same Shakhtar's amount of points... They're on exactly the same amount of points as Porto, Where so that's the big result. Shakhtar have been playing in, in, um, in, in Germany Warsaw. and Poland, They've haven't they? They've been playing in Warsaw. 
Yeah, I think they played in Germany as well. Mm. If I'm if but I'm yeah. right, but do you know? Do you know? Just looking at that there, if you know, like it don't really encourage you to want Man United and Newcastle to to get in there because if they do get in there, that limits it down. Yeah. Six yeah. options instead of eight. Yeah, but then, yeah, that's true. then you think about it the other way: that the longer these teams are in Europe, the more diverted they're going to be from their Premier League performances. Yeah, but then they might be in, the, they might be in the Europa, Europa League. But I want them in Europa. I yeah. still want them in Europe. For yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, from our point of view, yeah, with, 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 with if say Man United and Newcastle end up in third and go into Europa League, then we've got like uh, every team was available to, for us to play but if them two teams come in there it cuts it down to, yeah. to six out of yeah. all those names that I've named out Porto. if you could Porto yeah. That's Porto uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pick Porto so I'm just, just, just saying Porto. locations yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, yeah. I was in Porto it's a couple lovely. of months ago it is a lovely yeah, city yeah. out of all those teams there right if I had to pick one that I'd say I wouldn't mind in the next round still a good side It'd probably be Lazio, you know, for me. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think, I, I think you really want to go Rome. You, you, well, this is what I was. This is what I was going to ask. Listen, you. on a <laughs> for yeah, a fan, very hostile yeah. place, Italy. For a fan, for a fan, yeah, we we know that Lazio. When you go to Italy on holiday, it's lovely, but like, when you go there as a fan, <laughs> yeah. it's not the nicest. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's the, not nicest. the nicest. But I'm, but I'm saying they're not very welcoming. Yeah, no, but no. I'm saying though, that's a winnable game, isn't it, Lazio? Well, I Lazio, we played really well against them. Yeah, I watched bits of that. Yeah, and they could have actually been in front before they yeah. you know went for it they, they, they in the end they had to go for it and they left yeah. themselves open but yeah that's you, you, you want to avoid PSG. Doozy, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. you want to avoid PSG oh. in that don't you? you well this is the thing when you ask that question I've got two voices in my head one is you know who are we most likely to beat and the other one is where do I most want to go or the flip side to that is where do I want to avoid and and you brought it up I don't <coughs> really I kind of want to go to Lazio because I've never been to that stadium and it'd be an extra stadium on my spreadsheet. But the other side of it... <laughs> <His> spreadsheet. <laughs> but the other side of it is, I, I don't want to... I, I don't want to be in danger. And these places are dangerous. Yeah, they um, are. And, and, and the other side is, is how far do we want to travel? Obviously, PSG, we were discussing it yesterday, PSG will be the easiest trip for us. But at the end of the yeah. day, it's not about trips for us. No. It's about no, 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 games that Arsenal are going to be able to win. But as, but, and, and it's about progressing through the group. You can do other trips yeah. later on. No, but, but as supporters, it is. It is part of it that you It think. is part of it, but I think we have to accept, right? I, I don't know about yeah. you guys, I mean, the most right? important thing is we win. Let me, let, me, let me just say this, right? In Europe, when I go to a lot of games in Europe, right? A lot of them. I'd say probably 60... I'd say probably... 60% of the games I enjoy the whole experience that's like yep. the travelling everything and the actual game there's another 40% that you don't really fully enjoy it like I've been away for instance I've been to Napoli I don't know if you went we Napoli, Napoli no, it's right? not nice well, you went to Napoli the food's nice yes. when you went to Napoli lovely city by the way yeah Napoli it, Naples, on a Naples, night. It's not Naples, on a Naples a lovely city so when you go there at first Lovely city. I didn't even realise at first that Naples was a sort of coastal city. So lovely city, great food, good weather. I was enjoying it. Till match day come. Yeah, it's just, then match day yeah. comes now, it gets dark. You know, you got to, you can't just go to the game. You've got to go, all away fans have to go and meet in the port, in, 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 in down right in the centre of town. Get onto these buses. Yeah. Right, these ramshackle And you've got buses, to do that right? as well. And you've got to do that. If you don't do that, you, you are in danger. danger. You're in danger. Yeah, yeah. Exactly and then that. you've got to get onto these little ramshackle buses, right? And then they drive you from there to the ground, right? And then they've got, when they're driving you, they're having to like have outriders yep. on you and police cars, block off roads, everything. You get near to the ground, their fans are there waiting. Yeah. They're going like this yeah. and flares and all that. You get into the ground, you get pushed straight into the ground. You watch the game behind yeah. your favourite, yeah, loads cage, and loads of netting, netting and stuff like that. And you can see why they do the netting when you see last night with yeah, all the yeah. flares and they're throwing flares up into the away end, uh, into the home end yeah, and stuff like that. They don't right. do that to their away fans, which right, is but what I, I don't Hold on, let me with. just finish. So you do that, you watch the game behind all these netting, you're probably high up somewhere, like when they put you in Barcelona where yeah. you're sitting on the top of a mountain, that's what it seems yep. like, right? So you have a horrible experience of watching the game. Right, and then the game finishes. They keep you in 
for about an hour. It could be longer. When we went to Lons, we just kept him for about two hours. Yeah. Right. And then park. and then they just immediately usher you all out. Get out of here. Get on those buses. Back to the city centre. I think that's not a good um, no, no. match day experience. That's not the experience we're used to when we go to. Grounds, um, but that's in like the, uh, in, in 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 Italy all the time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, if you and if we go to if we go to Lazio, it's going to be like yeah. that. If you Spain's go to not as bad Spain's as not as bad. Seville. Spain's not as bad. No, no, Spain's no, not, no, no, no. So I I, I wouldn't you, agree you with you that. Still Spain's get these not, stadiums in Madrid and Barcelona where the away fans are right in the gods, and you can't. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, even but even some of the little bit better. I have yeah. to say, even, I'm, even I'm, some of the even some of the nicer stadiums. Even when you go Bayern, you're yeah, up in the gods. When you go to when you go to Inter Milan, AC Milan, up in the gods. You know what I mean? So the actual. So if you're there concentrating on. Um, what experience you're going to have as a fan, then it, listen, it, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah, forget yeah. about it, man, because yeah. you know the experience that ain't yeah. going to be great for the majority of those away. Uh, I, I think this is something, personally, that UEFA should be addressing, right? If you want to have a Champions League competition that's for all, you know, you'll get to the semi-final, final, they'll have their fan parks, this is for everybody, oh, yeah, right? If you want it to be for that, you need to address it, you need to improve the experiences for right, fans, yeah. so when they go to games, they go. It's it's a great experience oh, going I don't all enjoy around the and stuff actual, like that. The actual no. match day, like PSV don't. last year was dangerous. Like it's on a slope, you know. PSV, like it's it, dark, it's very steep. It's very steep, and it's you know, like you and think you, you, had, you had double pe netting. You, yeah, people falling over and all that. The biggest disappointment for me ever is I've always like Barcelona is something you oh, yeah. like. I want to go there and all that. Like the, the actual view you get at Barcelona is the it's most the worst. disappointing experience it's the for me ever, it's for me worst, of every worst. of the all so the grounds of all the grounds I've been to in Europe that is the worst ground to watch football as an away fan worst Barcelona the yeah. worst. I remember. I remember the last time I went there. Not only was you like about Glass, you that plastic you, thing you yeah, you got that little plastic. If you got vertigo, don't yeah. go to that game because I'll no, tell you, you, you can't you, see anything anyway. Yeah, like, right, you're, you're looking like down. You're so high up. You're looking at dots. Yeah, it's lot like, right. And then the last time I went, there was an open stadium and it poured down yeah. with rain as well, yeah. so we got wet. I, I'm sorry. No, it's very so if that's what you're looking for, we may as well just go out of the competition and just stick to the Premier League. It's not about. I, I, I'm just thinking about how quickly or how well we can progress in this competition. And, and how I look at it, Who can we beat? How I look at it is how you can beat and the shortest distance as well. Yeah. Because you don't like, do you remember like going to Ukraine, it's three hours and things like that. Yeah. So when you look at it, Paris would be a, be a good one. Porto like, is a good one because it's only a couple of hours. Spain or something like that, France, even Germany, but. Germany's always yeah. a good place to watch football. But you're gonna, you know what? I think there's certain countries, right, as well, that do it better. Germany's always a good place to watch football. Yeah. Portugal's always a good place to watch football. Spain is hit and miss because even miss. Atletico, again, when I went to yeah, Atletico, well, was was again, Behind, um, you're the, miles the, up the in the perspects. You're miles up in the sky. And they were battering, you're, battering yeah. us all, uh, yeah, after the, the, the police are heavy-handed. Yeah. There's all these things. Yeah. I, honestly, honestly, right? It, it's not. It's not good enough. It's no. not good. I, I look at those fans, um, the Lons fans, yesterday, but they're Emirates. They're lower tier. They yeah. go right by the action, right by the atmosphere. They can. They can. That enjoy. was a good experience. Yeah, right? they can, they got a good. They got. They got a good experience. Yeah, they, they can enjoy and they themselves. They misbehaved and they they didn't appreciate what they were given because if that had been in their own country, the moment they started behaving like that, the police would have gone in and battered them, mm. and. And all that happened was they just stood by and watched. And there was there were so many guys that you could see from where we yeah. were sitting who were misbehaving. I, you could have just pulled them out. Do you know what? I, 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 really, I really as well. I hand it to the police over here. Um, how they police games. I don't know if you noticed. There's, well, little, they did, they there's, little, and there's little subtle things they do over here, right, with policing that I think is way better than what I see when I go to places like France. In, France, they're terrible, right? Belgium, terrible, like Spain. Now, to, um, you know, Greece, when you go to a game in those places, right? When, when we came out of Lons, right? Remember, we, we, yeah. the way they, they, it was segregated, only Arsenal fans could be in that area, yeah? Only, nobody else could get near that. None of their fans could get near that area when you come out, yeah? Look at the police. They look very intimidating. Well, they were intimidating. They're all got- the, yeah. the, You asked for a fight with one of them, yeah. I didn't want to do it like that. They're, they're full of armor. Yeah, they yeah. got batons, they, they, they got like guns, and, yeah. and 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 this is the subtle difference between them and the English police, right? That I've noticed, right? 
straight away they've got their helmets on with the visors down and that and they're like that. They're ready. Yeah. And it's intimidating. Yeah, but it keeps well, you if you, if you actually if you actually notice how the English police um do it right, they will have their helmets on their side. They don't put them on unless they have to. So it's it's you feel a little bit more relaxed because you see the police and they're just like they've got their hats that you're aware of them, but you're not intimidated by them. You're not thinking to yourself, look man, they're just waiting to wade in. Right? If it kicks off, listen, I've been at Tottenham when it's kicked off, right? Straight away, they've got the helmets on, down from, they'll do all the same things that what they'll do in Europe, right? Mm. But they don't look, you, it's more, it's a more relaxing, to, not relaxing, but it's a more, less intimidating atmosphere, how those police do it. Whereas in, you go to Europe, man, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, PSG, I remember when I went there. They had these yeah. guys just stood there all game, just, Looking at you like that, as if it's really come out, it just started to rain and all that, like, and they were like, push you. They didn't actually ask you, they were just pushing you, yeah, yeah pushing but, you but away. I, th like, I you think know? you need something in between because yesterday, I don't know what they needed to do, the Lons fans, to get arrested, but they were throwing flares into club level. Now, that yeah. could have killed someone, I, I, I feel and, the, well, and the police yeah, was, stood terrible. by it. And with, with current CCTV technology, they could have picked out who did that. And they could have gone in arrest well, a restaurant, and they didn't. <laughs> they would have to arrest it about a lot you, of things. You know, yeah, yeah, did you see how many they had? I, I know. That's it, the fault. That's could, the fault of um. That's the fault of Arsenal security. How did, how did so many fans get in they there? Don't, they don't with search them. It's just all they do when you go in. They pat you down. And other grounds you go to, mainly in Europe, you get proper it's searched. I, I remember an Arsenal fan who uh, uh, I know that he he he, 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 he let a flare off at, at the Emirates. You know what I mean? Nothing. Uh, we didn't throw it. Just put it up in it. And he got banned for 18 months from, yeah. from the stadium. Yeah. Those fans that let off those flares yesterday, right? They're like, I, I can tell you, I've, I've seen, I went to Arsenal one time, I saw their CCTV set up. They can see everything. And they, absolutely and they let whoever did it Hold get on, away with one it. One second. They will be able to point out every single one of those fans that let, let off those um, flares. Oh, some of them will have on balaclavas yeah. or whatever, but they'll be able to point them out, right? But remember, now they're going to have to point it out and they're going to have to give it to those lawns the Lons officials and say, right, here. Half of those fans that did that were probably, that was their little ultra section. They're probably known to them. Nothing's gonna happen to those guys because they probably are running off the club. So nothing's gonna happen to those guys. So they'll just go on to the next game and do it again. Yeah. That's the difference. Like you said, if we know, if we went over to, if we went to Lons and all of us had a flair and that, we know that when we get back, that's it. We're gone from the game. Something has to be done in these countries. I, I think if you've got a European competition and you want, surely you want people to be traveling to those countries. That's part of the experience. You go there, you enjoy the city, then you go to the game, you enjoy the game, win or lose, come home. That's what it should be all about. Yeah. But far too many of these teams in Europe, right, have got these intimidating, when I say intimidating, I'm not on about like, you can have intimidating, Newcastle's intimidating, but you don't think you're gonna get your head kicked in. It's people who are intimidating on a football thing, right? Mm. You go to half of these, you know, like you said, you go, well, if we get a Lazio, or, yeah. you know, you get your Romas, and you've got to be careful, you've man. You know really what I mean? Careful. Very, very careful. The Newcastle have been a couple of games already this season, and they had loads yeah. of trouble with their fans and all that, like, you know, and, and listen, you can say what you like about it. Newcastle fans and everything like that. They, they make friendly. It, they're, they're friendly when you go up there. They, we, we go up there every time and you have a laugh and a bang with them. I'm pretty sure when they go away from home, they're the same. Yeah. Uh, and, and they've been picked on a few times. Like, and, and, and you have to be really wary. You go into these bars and things like that. Like you, you, these, these, particularly in Italy, they target it. Yeah. They target and, those and, and that's part of the experience for us going. It's not just about the, the game. We enjoy, we have two days there. We have a great time when we go. And, yeah. if, and if that's restricted, then yes, I don't want to go to these places. But the other side of it is, I just want Arsenal to win the Champions League at Wembley. So we're going to have to. <laughs> anyway, moving on from that, obviously we've got um, game at the weekend. Now Wolves, we're going to that on a real high. Um, Wolves got a horrendous record against oh, us at, yeah. at the Emirates. Got a horrendous um, record in VAR yeah. and all the four. four they, they, they got oh, a couple of. Uh, so yeah, I hope they're not going to even it up. This yeah, week. this That's is why I was saying it earlier on the day. Uh, um, we've had a hor horrendous record with VAR as well. Let's not forget. Um, how are you guys feeling ahead of that game? And we've got a good record against Wolves. I think they are. They are a team. Let's not forget they beat Man City this season. Mm. They beat, beat Tottenham. Spurs. But a lot of those victories have come at home. Should have beat Man United. 
should have beat Man United. They seem to be much better at home yeah. than they yeah. are on the road. I was watching their game the other night and even taking out some of the VAR decisions, they looked a bit open at yeah, the back. Yeah, very open. Even though they're going forwards, um, I like the way they attack. They, you know, We know Gary O'Neill when they've he was at Bournemouth. Quality, Rob. He's, they've got a yeah, yeah, they've got a bit of quality, but they will be, I, I think one of the key things that happened to them the other day is when that Lamina, yeah, um, who yeah, I think is yeah. a very good player He's in their midfield. For this guy. He's suspended for the game. I think that Gomez was suspended. Um, there is a rumour that Neto could possibly be back yeah. as well, though. It's not going to be easy, easy, but you've well, got, well, you got well, to fancy it, it, us. It should be easy, easy. I mean, when you look at them at the beginning of the season, they were one of the favourites to be relegated. When... Um, yeah, it's the start I, of the yeah, season. Yeah, I, I forget his second name, but his first name's Julian, the manager. Um, oh, funny. Lopetegui. Yeah, yeah. How do you Lopetegui. pronounce it? All oh, right, it's Julian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Julian. Yeah, Julian. His reputation was excellent. And when he left, and the reasons why he left was because they didn't have the budget because of um, the financial fair play. They couldn't buy players. Mm. So, so he left. And they've got Gary O'Neill in. And the reputation of Gary O'Neill which I think is unfair, was that he's a poor manager. They call him the PE teacher. You know, he, he did wonders at, at Bournemouth. So their um, expectations for this season, because I was speaking to Inda this morning, the, the Wolves uh, fan, and they thought they, they were going down. Now, they've overachieved, and they feel that they're probably seven points worse off than they should be because of poor VAR decisions. But I think one of the reasons why um, they've done so well isn't just because they've played well, is because of the teams around them have been really poor. You know, some of the teams at the bottom of the league, they've done awful. Yeah, so but they, I, yeah, so did Julian, they beat Man City. Yeah, they beat they Man City. Beat, they beat Man City, right? Beach they beat Spurs. Tottenham, right? They beat Tottenham. I mean, you just, so you, you forget about teams around them being poor. They have played big teams and put in some great performances. Should have got a draw against Man United in the first game of the season. Again, another hor horrendous VAR decision. So they've shown already this season that they can take it to the big boys and win. Oh, I think you've got to be wary of them. At home, you, you have to be wary of them and you have to respect every team in the Premier League. But the performances that we're on, the quality that we're showing, we, we should beat them, especially that they have got some injuries. I don't think Neto will be back. Um, they've got Lamina, who's, oh, out, who's, you? who's, who's oh, You're the physio, are you? Well, I've, I've, got some, I've got some inside information. Oh, is that right? Got, he's yeah. got his notes out. <laughs> inside information Lamina from who? Oh, got, hold on, you get that inside information well, off. I spoke to Inder this morning. I did my own little private box-to-box -box with him. Inder's a, a fan. He's well-connected. He is well-connected. Yeah. So because Inder told you now... So, that, so um, in, Inder told me... Right, so that, Neto that won't Neto, be playing. ...that Neto is very, very... doubt. They, these are his words, so don't blame me if it's wrong. Inder said... He's very, very doubtful. And he heard that from who? Put him under I, the bus, wouldn't I you? Didn't, well, I only had sort of 10 minutes to talk to him. Today, no, but so who, who, who did he hear that from? He's I, well connected. I, who did he hear that from? I didn't hear his source, to be fair. <laughs> but he said, he said Neto um, is, is very doubtful. Um, the one that they'll really miss is Lamina. Yeah. And he also said Saar isn't the best at uh, playing the ball out and we could catch him with, with yeah, the you press. Know, yeah, you know what? A friend of mine as well, he's a Wolves fan, he also said to me, he goes, Saar will give you two goals. Yeah. So yeah. it looks like he must be having a bit of a hard time. Yeah, and, and, and yet the other thing, a bit of information, was their, their left back, who's pretty crucial to them, I forget the name, uh, rolled his ankle on Monday. Yes, yeah, he's, 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 he's out. And, and doubtful. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and this, ain't Nori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a good player. He's and, a very good player. And this is the difference. Done with, it very with early a, in the game. With a team mm. like Wolves, with the financial backing that they've got or the lack of it this season, is they can't, they're just not going to be able to ride those kind of injuries and suspensions. Well, yeah, yeah, but attacking wise, they've got some good players, yeah. man. Um, Lemay is was, a big plus yeah, for him. Yeah. I'll tell you what, got, I'm they, impressed. They've got with that Wang as well up front. Yeah. He's oh, a good he's player. good. He's, yeah, he's, but he's, that, yeah they're, they're good players. But ultimately, if you're asking I'll how, take how we're Lemay, feeling, yeah. we should be good. beating these teams 3 4 0. So long as we get the early goal. Mm. And again, that was the difference between mm. yesterday. Yeah. And Arsenal, Arsenal won their last four Premier League games against Wolves. Um, having won just two of their previous eight against them. So, yeah, we had a bad Yeah, yeah we had a little bad, but the last few, you know, four games we, we, we've we uh, really done well against. Wolves have never kept a clean sheet in 18 previous Premier League games against Arsenal. Um, losing the exact uh, fixture, 5-0 last season. Wasn't that the last game of the yeah, season? Last yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to judge yeah. that one because yeah. everyone's on the beach and, you know, but um, this, this is a game that Arsenal... You know, you you expect them to win, and really need to win. You know, what I mean, I, I think 
that game and then we go away to Luton, that's another game as well. You look at it and think, come on, Arsenal. Even though Luton can't take them lightly, Liverpool nearly came a cropper against them um, a few weeks ago. Who did um, you want to win that game? At Kenilworth Road. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't get that I'm actually honest. looking. I'm looking forward to that game. You know, you, you, the yeah, Joey, Robbie Lyle yeah. Derby, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Robbie yeah. Lyle Derby. You know what I mean? I tell you, man. Um, I love the stick I get about the, <laughs> the loot and stuff. You know that. I love it. I absolutely love it. Right. But I'm looking forward to that game. It'd be funny if yeah. he was going in the omen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we well, might have to do I that to get the, a ticket. That's the option at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're struggling. Yeah, you know what I mean? We'll we'll struggle. Struggle. That's it. You know what I mean? If I wasn't, I hope if I was a supporter, then maybe I could get a bloody get, ticket. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but um, Luton was supposed to win that. Come on. And, and, and so these, I think. I looked at these three games coming back after the international break. I'm like, we really to win those. Brentford away, always going to be difficult, but we got yeah. that done. Yep. Got to beat Wolves. Got, got to beat, beat Luton, Luton because the next three after that are tough. Yeah. Are tough. Well, Villa got to be, away. Got to beat Brighton. Brighton as well. at home. Liverpool yeah. away. So yep. we need to give ourselves a platform going into those games. Um, and also, again, it's another opportunity this weekend. We're top of the league, only just, but top of the league. We took advantage of. City playing Liverpool last week. Man City playing Tottenham yeah, this yeah. weekend. So again, a situation that we could take an advantage of. I mean, in that game on Sunday, um, Man City versus Tottenham, who would you like to win that game? This is a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Because <laughs> if, a, if, if Tottenham win it... I'm going then Christmas shopping. I yeah. don't care. Like, like, <laughs> uh, uh, as long as Arsenal win, that's, that's all that matters. Uh, and then, then either any of the results that, that don't bother me. I, I, I'll say it now. I don't. I don't want Spurs to win any games. So, so you rather yeah. City win it? I don't want to say rather, but yeah. I, 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 at the end of the day, yeah, City win it one 0 That do me. So you have to look at it a different way. It's which team will you take most pleasure from losing? Because you don't think about the other team winning. You don't want to. You don't well, want City winning. That way. City City losing. Yeah. Puts more of a gap between them and us. If we yeah. if we win our game. I mean, yeah. Uh, again, I've got two voices in my head. One says. City are our rivals and Spurs are flattered to deceive this season and, and you know the fact they've lost three games in a row should be indicative of how their season will go so at the end of the season if we're competing with Spurs then we've done something wrong so from a footballing perspective you want to see City lose yeah but yeah if City, but, yeah, if City lose right and we yeah, win so if, we'd be four it, points it, above them yeah so if you look at it from Arsenal's you know not as a fan but from Arsenal's benefit it's better that City lose or at least don't win. The, the best result for me is a draw because then yeah. you know, you've got the least well, amount of points being given out but to two teams that we despise. But, uh, but with Spurs, you know what I mean? This could galvanise them if they was to win this. You know no, they'll I mean? mess like, it up. But, don't but I, don't I, worry. I know, but I, I just... Look, they're on a, they've, they've lost three on a row. I want it to be four. And then hopefully West Ham make it five. And I just want, I just love them losing. I can't help it. It's just <laughs> yeah. the way I've been brought up. Would you like to see them relegated? Because then we wouldn't play them, would we? Do you know what? That, what do you remember that when they were relegated that that season? Uh, you you won't yeah. remember it. They got relegated. Yeah, it was like, early you know, 70s, was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't really yeah. remember it. Though, but yeah. it, everybody used to say like, "Oh, oh, I miss that." Yeah, you miss it. Miss that yeah. Arsenal. I hate the Arsenal yeah. and Spurs games anyway. Like, but it, it's funny. Like, you probably would miss it. So, I, th I, yeah. I think I think you. I remember. I like seeing get relegated for a year. I remember. Yeah, yeah. you know what? I remember speaking to uh, Matty. He's a Newcastle fan. You know, Matty Renton, yeah. Newcastle yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. Right? And he was like, when Sunderland got relegated, because obviously that's their hot, hot derby, right? He goes, when they got relegated, he's like, first year, you know, great laugh. Yeah, everyone laughed at Sunderland. Brilliant. Glad that they're gone. He goes, second year, still sort of laughing at them, struggling and that. Because, but after that, you want them back. they want them yeah. back because they missed that derby because that derby was such yeah. a hotly contested thing. And, you know, I, th I think it'd be the same with Tottenham. I think, let them go down for a year, but then come back because you, you miss you'd miss that derby, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, no, I, 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 no I, I, yeah, you you, you would miss come that. Come on, derby. man, yeah, yeah. that's the first, when, when the season starts. One of the first games I look for yeah. is that. I mean, I look for looking at yeah. When, I, 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 when, I, I, when, when are we playing Tottenham? But you I, know what I mean, I, 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 but it'd be I, so funny, wouldn't it? It would be, but I, you wouldn't want them down long term, would you? Yes. No, I, I, prob I, don't, I probably, I don't think I probably I would. would just for because I see Spurs fans anyway. The Spurs fans I'd be seeing every day. I just revel in it. 
The greatest yeah, thing about it, you would at first, but after a while you'd be like, oh, I no, that. I'd still the gr- revel in it. The greatest thing about Spurs fans at the moment, and I've got a few obviously like in a family and whatever like is, that they're losing at the minute and, and they're, I don't say nothing. You know what I mean? They're doing you all right, like, and they're thinking he's going to say something yeah. in a minute, and I just don't. I just, them in, I'm, don't just, you? I'm just laughing, and then, then they come out and go, "Oh, he's oh yeah." yeah. yeah. Like, I'm I'm it. Love it. I, I just love it when they're losing. I'll I tell can't you what, we're proper spiky at the moment because I, I was on DR on Monday, um, DR Sports, and on I did a weekend roundup on there, and Abby was on there. She's a Man City fan, aren't and, she? Yeah. Well, she was getting proper spiky at me because <laughs> yeah. she kept going on about how brilliant they're playing. I'm like Abby, yeah. yeah. You just lost your last three games. I don't care because we're playing well. I, you're losing. Yeah. You've lost your last three games. I go, what if that turns into four this weekend? So five, I don't yeah. care. It's the fo- what if it turns into five, six? You know what I mean? I mean, yes, they and then uh, they keep going on about I, injuries. I, I yes, did. they have got injuries. I mean, I think Benton calls out now. Yeah, again, right? three months. But, but even so, right, yeah, I, I said to him, right, I, go, I remember when we went to your place, we had loads of injured players. Rob Holding had to come in. Cedric had to come in. Did you guys show us any sympathy that day when you beat us? No, you Did anybody it. mention the players that were missing no, no, in that no, game? So. No, you just said you battered Arsenal, right? So I got no sympathy for you guys and whatsoever. I'm sorry. And the other thing about because I did, I watched a bit of that, and it, 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 it was right what you're saying. Because you've got injuries, all right, well, change change your system then, like. Change you know, your like, system. Just, you, because you've got injuries, don't keep going, you know what I mean? Anybody can do what he's doing at the moment, just yeah. going, putting a team together and just go out there and run, 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 run around, try and entertain and then lose. Somewhere along the line, if you've got a lot of injuries, you have to turn It'd around be sensible, and isn't say, it? right. But that's because he's not a good manager and he's not experienced enough at this level. It was fine when it, it was going well for him. But you look at his history. I think he started off in Australia, then he went to Japan, then he went to Scotland. Now, when you They'd play... He well in Scotland, you, didn't he? Yeah, won the you, league. OK, but there's only two teams in Scotland that realistically... You're going to off to Scots now. No, but it's, well, right, you won't right, 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 will he? Like, it's, right, right, right. It's, it's realistically, there's two... All right, look at the history of it. There's two teams over the last however many years that can win the league in Scotland. He's not used to managing teams that are going to go into games being weaker. Yeah, yeah, and right. and he's come here. He's had a role. Everything's gone his way. He's got some last-minute goals. He hasn't had any injuries, and now he's being found out. He just hasn't got the experience. Yes, he he's a he's a nice guy. Keep him there, brilliant. He can be everyone's friend, and they'll lose, and we'll all be happy. Yeah, like I said on that show, it's a bit like Bielsa, where everybody yeah. was mm. saying great football, but yeah. what happened? Yeah, they end up getting relegated. Yeah. So it's, it's, eventually, yeah. the, eventually, if you carry on losing, Spurs fans, if say, yeah. if, if, say if Spurs were to lose against Man City then they lost to West Ham then they lost to Newcastle that's their next game after that I think yeah. they got Forest after that so if they were yeah. to lose let's their next four or five then. six games we're, we're, let's see what they're saying then yeah. It, yeah. and that's why I want them to lose on Sunday <laughs> yeah. All right. well, we see how that we see how that goes we see how that goes on Sunday actually um, before we go I wanted to ask you guys about um, there was a talk during the week obviously we've seen some Wolves was on the, uh, a dodgy VAR, we've been on the end of a dodgy VAR. Newcastle, that was an <laughs> unbelievably poor Funny. decision. VAR, although there's a lot of Arsenal fans saying, Suck Come, it yeah, up, Newcastle, suck, yeah. Karma. suck it up. <laughs> Karma for our one that we, we didn't get given against them, which was bad for us. What do you make of the new thing they're talking about bringing in sin bins? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Well, I'm going to say it now. Yeah. I, I, I think that's that's me done with football. Then I think mean, it, it was done. So, no, honestly, I am not. I am. Not, I am not enjoying football as much as I used to because of the VAR things and all that. Do you know the only goal that I enjoy, I, I really celebrated yesterday was the penalty because you knew it couldn't be offside. Like, you know, <laughs> really, like I really do, like, it's, it's it's getting like that. The first goal, you know, haven't scored that yesterday. I think oh. Easy offside. You can't. I'm, in every yeah. goal, you know. I, mean, I celebrated the game against Brentford. You know, thinking like uh, the first one, yeah. first yeah. one, and then all of a sudden it's chalked off. I'm not enjoying football as much as I used it to. I've got to say yeah, that. It, it and if they, yeah, but, 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 but if they bring been, in sim bins and all that, come on. But it's it's being brought in, in my opinion, by people that have never actually played the game. Now I haven't played the game at the highest level, but I have played the game. And realistically, I well, think... They, what, they probably played the game for... No, in some it, little amateur teams, right? Now, but Sunday if you, morning and youth football and yeah, all that, don't they? But, but if, you think about, if you think about this realistically, what will happen 
with the sim bin. So a player will get put into the sim bin for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Now what's going to happen is... The team's going to defend. The, the team's going to just defend because the, they know they've got to last out 10 minutes. They're going to waste time. Yeah. They're going to kick the ball. All these, all these dark arts to just waste another 10, 15 minutes till the other player comes back. So it's going to kill the game. The game's going to be absolutely no, sterile for those hold 10, hold 15 hold minutes. This is an unpopular opinion from me, yeah? I don't mind it. What? I don't mind the sim bin. I don't mind the sim bin idea. What gains you get out of a sim bin? All right, let me give you examples where... Go on, yeah, please do. Player runs through, like which we've seen even this season a few times, runs through on goal, dives. Blatant dive, nobody touched him and that. Sim being off for 10 minutes. Yellow card? It's, no, it's a yellow card, but he gets up and but, he's... But, still, but then he's got to watch himself he, the rest of the that game. Will, that will make him think twice about cheating a in that way. yellow card makes him no, think no, no, twice. No, no, no. No, it doesn't. It does one yellow away Hold from on. a red. Yeah, but if, if players can ride out yellows. Teams share around yellows even. Sim being off you go, right? All of a sudden... You're going to think twice because you can really cross your team. You say you defend, but you're going to be down to a big disadvantage. I'll tell you another one where the Simbin one might work. You know, like you go at a game sometimes, right? And I'll say, last 10 minutes of a game. Martinelli's clean through. Yeah, he's clean through and a player just takes him out. As we say, the old phrase, took one for the, took one for the team. Normally, yellow card, that player's... Let's, let's be real. Most people who get a yellow card don't get sent off. Who's to look at the percentages, tiny percentage of people who get sent off. But you know a player's going through, you know, he, he's he's in on goal. He's, you know what I mean? Got his, other players are charging into the box. You deliberately drag him back and that because freak, that should be a sim bin. That would cut that out. We don't, we, it might result in a more flowing game, a more game and more action nah, be because a player, a player is going to think twice about doing that because he knows he's going to be off for 10 minutes. Maybe like some of the ones where these players are, you know, at the moment where um, players are complaining, like having a go at the referee. So I think um, I saw one the other day, what game was it? Lewis Dunk. Descent. Got descent, descent. kept going on, got sent off. I think it's too harsh to send off a player for two bits of descent. But if he got Simbin for it, you know, it's sort of like what they saw almost like an amber card there, and it's not red. So I don't think yeah, it's bad it's, enough for a red. It, I, I, it, I, I think it could actually make the game yeah, it, even it, better. The only, my only worry about it is, is because like me, I'm in favor of VAR as well, but my worry is what I see with VAR. What, the what's problem, wrong with that game, the problem, The problem with VAR is the referees who referee it. That's the problem, and that's what's messed up VAR, that now we're just like, oh my well, God. Rob, if they were getting... They, they do actually get the majority of decisions right. It's just that they've, what's really upset me about VAR is that obvious decisions that they should be making, they're still getting those wrong as well, which then makes me think, this I start to ear on the side of you guys because I'm like, if you're going to just continually get it wrong, obvious things, there's no point in having it. But the concept of VAR, I feel in a modern day football where this is not the 70s, not the 80s or 90s, we got a million cameras at a game that can tell us what's happened, right? I think we should be yeah, and using getting them, it wrong, right? Yeah, but and I'm saying, I, I'm saying, my only thing, that's where I kind of see where you guys are coming from because they shouldn't be getting wrong uh, what I'll they're getting I'll wrong. Tell you but the same being thing, I don't think it's a bad idea. I'll I'm tell not against it. I'll tell you an example about where where VAR is wrong and it's ruining the game of football, right? And it's ruining ruining the game of football. Good for us that Rodri got sent off against uh, Nottingham Forest when he pushes somebody like that and um, the fella goes rolling down on the field, right? I watched somebody headbutt somebody the other day like yeah, that. I, I wouldn't it's seen, Wolves game. Seen and Wolves game. Yeah. Seen on the TV, the fella doesn't dive and go it running doesn't really around. He yeah. doesn't really headbutt him. He like, does. does he? It, 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 that's not, listen, that is not Johnny, a headbutt. Don't argue with me. When I've seen... when not I, a when I've seen, That's not a headbutt. When I've seen Granite Shacker be sent off for yeah. pushing somebody, I've seen him go up yeah. and headbutt him. I've seen players... Butting heads and getting sent off and rolling yeah, around. He he actually headbutts it. If you don't see that and don't give that as a sending off, it's shocking. It's yeah. shocking. I think with oh, that one, the player was too honest, didn't it? Is Max yeah. Kilman? If he would have, if, if he, he goes down, if he'd have fell down, down holding his nose and that, he would. They it's would have referred it to but, VAR. But they watch that. And, and, and go go back and watch I've that watched it. and go back I and watch have, what I've, Rodri I've, does I've what, watch it. Rodri does how is one sent off for three games and not the other you go if you want to defend that 
Go, go ahead and defend that now. Okay. I'll but just, maybe, that, maybe that's the sort of incident that could be a sin bin instead. The way well, where that because it was not well, enough. I, I, I don't. Let, let's be, let, let, ten I, years I, ago. Hold yeah, on. Let's be real, right? That was not enough, really. That little headbutt. That was not enough, really, for him to go down and roll no, around. No, and, that. No. and, and, and it's not enough. I don't out. think it's serious enough to send that player off. But I do feel that if he was simbing for ten minutes for doing that, because it's unsporting. You know what I mean? To be up to Ser- in someone's seriously, face Seriously, like seriously, right? Is Woods Rodri that is the same thing there? Same thing. Done same thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember agree. Granite Shack had done that at Burnley. They couldn't wait yeah. to send him off. Like, and, you know I agree. I mean? And maybe we get less sending offs, and we uh, and you know maybe yeah. maybe that would be better for the game. So I will I will defend it. Go on in. So <laughs> that the Rodri one should not been a sending off. The Granite Shack one should not been a set sending off. The one on Monday should not have been a sending off because what's ruining the game is exactly what you described of players not getting touched properly. You know, this it wasn't a headbutt. I've been headbutted. It was nothing like that. I got properly headbutted. <laughs> I wonder <laughs> and, why. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's what, what's ruining the game is the acting, the simulation of the pretending. That didn't hurt. If someone, come up, might to, if someone comes up to me, to me and just touches me, I don't go rolling round on the ground. No, I know, but uh, the rules the rules are if you raise your hands, it's a sending off. If you if you so why not that, why not be to, why not to be sim bin for that then after yeah. ten minutes? And, and it was unfortunate. Well, why do you need sim bins when like it's going to ruin the game? It's going to ruin the game for years and just, years. Just you probably said off. the same thing when they were bringing in the back pass rule. Right, and look no, out. I, I, listen, and look out. Yeah, listen, yeah. You I'll probably go with the back said the yeah. same I, thing. I, I then. remember no, playing I in it. I was, I was playing when that happened. When it came in and all that, like you know. And what did you say at first? Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure about it. But once ah. you see it, once you see it in, 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 in thing, it was a good thing. Now, don't forget this. This sim bin stuff is still going. It's, it's been going on for over a year now. It's in, it's in Sunday morning football, local football, uh, grassroots football. Mm. They're doing it, like you know, I. I don't think it should be in professional football. That's my opinion. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, I'd like to hear from people in the comments. Let us know what you think. Um, do you think the Simbin idea is a good idea? Do you think maybe it would reduce the amount of red cards, um, reduce the amount of simulation, or do you just say, um, um, do you just say to yourself, stop messing around with the game? Stop messing with the game. Huh? How long's a game going to go yeah, on? Yeah, but what like are you going to do? Football yeah. sooner or later. No, but like, hold you on. You mean? do have to. You do have to adapt, don't you? The you you, you, game can't be the same. As it, let's go back to the seventies. Play on the pitches with sand. No, 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 with, I, you, you know what I mean, like, oh, okay, come listen, on. You, I mean, the game oh, has to evolve. I'm going to say, like, you know, I like, evolved, the, I like the way it? the game's evolved in certain things, like the, like the back pass rule. Like, I think that's great. Goal line techni- technology, fantastic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've oh, oh, got nothing against that. And the pitches are so and much better. And the pitches better. are so much better now, like you know. But I, some of these, this, you know, this VAR stuff and all that, it's still like yeah. an opinion. It's the way it's me been and used. him are on the, on on the VAR, right? One one game, right? Yeah. He, he's me, we don't agree on this headbutt, right? I'm watching it. I'm sending him off. Well, we don't agree. He, it wasn't a headbutt. He, he, he's not. He, he, he's he's going to send him off. So it's not fact, is it? It's still an opinion but that's of why two they have three, people. I think they have three of them on VAR, don't they? I don't know what they do. You've got VAR, to have an uneven number, otherwise you are, you could get stalemate. Anyway, listen, um, we could talk about this all day yeah. long. Um, let's yeah. just get, before we go, let's get your predictions for the Wolves game at the weekend. Let's get, actually, Wolves and Luton, because we won't have another show until after Luton. So, Wolves and Luton. 2-0, two 2-0. Nil, 2-0, two 2-0? Nil. Two nil, two nil. Yeah, I, th- I think we will concede one goal against Wolves. I think it'll be three-one, and I think we'll we'll go to Luton and and score. I think we we'll go three-nil at Luton. I think I'll go two-nil, two-nil as well. I think we're defending well at the moment. Mm. A really, really hard team to score against. Um, so yeah, two-nil against Wolves, two-nil against Luton. But listen, guys, thanks very much. Um, it's been well, it's been a pleasure. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, know. <laughs> you already started arguing with him already. He says yeah. it's warm out there. He'll go out there in his <laughs> swim shorts in a minute. Like, you know what I mean? So it ain't cold out there. Yes. Uh, enjoyable show, guys. Don't forget you can subscribe here to AFTV. Don't forget to check out all of our previews that are going to be coming up for that Wolves game. Um, we're going to be previewing the game, um, which is going to be taking place at the Emirates. And of course, we've got a big watch along to it as well. So make sure you check it out here on AFTV. Thanks for watching. Invincible Podcast will be back next week. We'll be talking about those two games that we just mentioned, Wolves and Luton, um, on the next episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie, and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. 
straight talking, considered discussion brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.